Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. This is our second video on Langs with Evaluation. I'm going to walk through kind of the, the core primitives or, or the basic components of Langsmith to give you a sense of how to kind of build up your understanding from scratch. So in the prior video, we talked about kind of the landscape evaluations and the things you may want to do in terms of you know, these four categories, building data sets, implementing evaluators, um, and then applying evals, and of course, specifying a task that you care about. So let's actually kind of build this up. Let's say I have an LM app, like I have a task, and RAG is a very popular use case. There is an index, you do retrieval, and then you do generation based on this, the retrieved documents to produce an answer. So it's question in, answer out. Now, the single unit of work for each of these steps we call a run. So in this particular case, there's two runs here. One is question to documents, and then documents to answer. So it's indexing or retrieval and generation. Those are like the two core steps, so to speak. Single units of work, runs can be tagged, they can, you can have feedback to runs, you can have metadata runs, which we're going to talk about later. Now, runs are rolled up into traces. So traces is a collection of runs. Um, and for example, in this particular case, the RAG app trace would have the two runs, the run for the retrieval step, the run for the generation step. That's kind of it. And then a project is just a collection of traces for a given app. So let's say I had this RAG app. It was in production somewhere. A bunch of users used, you know, basically used it. Um, that All those traces would just be logged to that particular project. So that's really it. So kind of, again, I have an app. It's a RAG app. It has two steps. Each step is a run. The app going from you know, input to output is a trace. That trace contains the two runs. And every time I run that app, all those traces get rolled into a project. That's kind of it. So those are the kind of key, key components of like, of kind of the task component or the app component of this four, you know, these four pieces that we've been talking about. Now, data sets. Here we kind of talked about the flavors of data set you might want, manually curated from logs or synthetic. But really at the core, data sets are pretty simple. They just have an input and optionally an output. Um, so in the case, like if you're doing a RAG app, you might have a data set with question answer pairs. In that case, there is an input and an output. Each of the pairs typically doesn't have to be, is just like, a, for example, a dict or a key value pair, like question, um, your question, answer, your answer. Um, now that's an example. And the data set is just a collection of examples. And as I just mentioned, a lot of times the input outputs are just like key values. You know, so in the case of RAG, question, answer, you know, key value pairs for my input and my output. Um, there are other types of data sets that are interesting, though. Chat and LLM in particular. These are a little bit more relevant if you kind of want to do things like fine tuning, in which the data set requires a particular format, like, for, for example, chat or LLM format. For a lot of applications we'll talk about, key value is, is completely fine. And again, your data set composed of examples. Each example just has an input and optionally an output. That's really it. Um, and now evaluator. So what's happening here? We, we kind of talk through a few different flavors here. There's different kinds of judges you can choose. So like LLM is a judge, heuristic judges, like function, the human judge, and then different modes like comparison, comparing two different traces, for example, two different generations. Um, reference free, so like there's no ground truth. You give an LLM judge a bunch of general criteria. Um, or human judge general criteria. And then of course you can also provide ground truth. So those are kind of like the things you can think about in terms of evaluation. Now, here's a very important piece where these all come together. So like what's the information flow when you run an evaluation? What's the evaluator really doing? So again, our data sets composed of examples. Each example is an input and an output. When you run an evaluation, you take that input and you plumb it into your application. So let's think about a RAG app, for example. The input's a question. We plumb that into our RAG chain. We get some output answer. That's that. That's what you see on that bottom uh, kind of in red. Now, also, you have your ground truth answer as an output in your data set. That also gets plumbed through to the evaluator. So the evaluator, which is kind of very intuitive, has access to a ground truth answer, in the case of this RAG toy example, and the LN answer, your RAG chain answer. And then it's doing some judging at the two. Now, this is where there's a lot of different interesting options here. You can build a custom evaluator like we talked about. 
You can also use a bunch of off-the-shelf Lagsmith evaluators to do the grading. So in this particular case, we have an answer from you know our LM. We have a ground truth answer, and we want to use a built-in evaluator. We can use one of the evaluators that are label centric, so they are like tuned or or designed to do a comparison between like an LM output and a ground truth output. And we'll talk about the various options later, but I just want to give you a flavor of really what's happening here is you have your data set of examples, you're passing the you know the expected, in this particular case example, to your judge. Um, you have your app, which is receiving the input from your data set. It's producing its own output. So now you have an output from your app. You have the ground truth output. You pass them to a judge. A judge makes a decision and outputs effectively a, some kind of score. That's really it. That's the big picture for how to think about the information flow when doing evaluations. And that's really it. You know, for like the core primitives, this is the key thing to understand. And once you understand this, everything else is kind of, is pretty easy. Um, so we're going to be talking about a little bit more detail and, and showing some code examples in the next video. Thank you.